We're back and I figure I'd give you a quick spin through the garden in That's January. It is January 2023. I figured this was a perfect time. I know I've done another previous January update in the garden, um, but it has been at least a year since then. And we are in California, and those of you who kept your eye on the news, you'll know we had a lot of rain here in California uh, this month and last month, um, and it has made this garden really, really happy. So let me uh, show you what's going on. All of the aeoniums are out of dormancy. That usually happens in the winter. They open up, they go really green, especially when it gets wet. Uh, winter is their time to really explode. Uh, in the summertime, they'll go a lot more red, kind of start to shrivel up a little bit, um, and that's okay. We also get a lot of blooms in the winter here. The Kalanchoe is blooming, and these are um, monocarpic, which means that those branches will start to die after those blooms go off, but if you can see, they drop a ton of babies. They are a little bit invasive in that way. There's some places where these really shouldn't be grown, um, like Australia, for example, uh, because they can be really invasive with the amount of little baby plants that they drop. But the blooms sure are pretty. Um, aloe generally aren't in bloom here, and my aloes are starting to come out. I have one over there. Let's see, changes in the garden lately. Um, I can't remember if these aloe blue flames had been planted. Um, these were found on the side of the road. A neighbor had left them out. I have one that is really happy there, and the one that was over here, uh, it, didn't, it didn't survive. It rotted, it didn't take. So I've put some other agaves in their place that are much smaller. Uh, they're not looking super happy either, but we'll see. Hopefully they'll start to... Um, thrive. This, this corner is looking kind of sad. Um, but other things at the front, you'll notice a lot of wildflowers. This is one of those really positive things about the rain. In California, we're always recommended to get our wildflower seeds out in the ground uh, in December so that the rain will kick them into uh, growing. And that's exactly what happened. But for me, if you had seen on a previous video, I put out these wildflower seeds last year and it did okay. Um, this year I didn't throw out any seeds and you can see they just naturally started to germinate themselves. There's a few weeds in there as well, but I am really looking forward to what will hopefully be a little bit of a super bloom. And what's interesting as well is you'll notice there's a lot of California poppies growing here. I put those seeds out a year ago and they never germinated and now they've obviously just stayed dormant in the soil for a while. Uh, one thing you'll notice, no, I still have not done the dry riverbed that I had pr promised myself that a year ago I thought would be in here. Um, I've kind of ignored this garden a little bit. We spent a lot of time out of our house. We had some renovation done and we were away for a couple of months. and. I've kind of ignored the garden and I'm looking forward to getting back into it, filling in these patches. These Senecio blue chalk sticks are looking kind of sad. I'm gonna fill in some more gravel there so it doesn't look too bad. We obviously have some gopher damage as well. But my sedums, again, this, this part of the garden gets a lot of direct sunlight and I think everything's a little bit stressed out. Um, so they got a lot of rain and then now it's starting to dry up again. It's towards the end of January. But going back up here, up towards the path, again, everything is green. The, um, the rock purslane is starting to come back. Uh, that kind of dies off towards the end of summer, fall. Aeonium's looking great. I've got a lot of aloes growing in here. A lot of little agaves. Uh, the nasturtiums are starting to take over once again, as they tend to do when the rains come. Those seeds germinate. Got a lot of little hidden succulent beds. Might need, might need to give them a little bit of love. This is a new part of the garden that I've kind of rearranged. I had a lot of 
Agaves that I had found on the side of the road and I finally found some spots for them. A campfire plant that was on clearance at Home Depot and you can see why, uh, again, that's monocarpic, so where those blooms come out, they die, but they've got little babies underneath. So that's one thing if you have monocarpic plants, don't be afraid of the death bloom because they do put in new little baby plants. And we've got a lot of weeding to do. That's a downside to the rain, but it just goes with the territory. I've planted up another torch cactus and this area is looking kind of sad. I'm really hoping that once it gets warm, I think those agaves and those aloes are really gonna start to grow bigger. I'm always trying to find the balance of plants that I know are going to get bigger, um, but because a lot of my plants I get for free or as pups, they always start pretty small. So just trying to figure out a good balance of that kind of thing. Again, here are those Kalanchoes. They're blooming now, but there's so many little babies uh, down here. So we might have to take care of that a little bit so it doesn't get too overgrown. I have this Euphorbia, I think it's called a cattail Euphorbia. This was um, propagated from a tiny piece that had broken off at Home Depot and it's loving this spot. This has grown tenfold since I actually planted it in the soil here, um, right next to an aloe cameronii that I put in recently. This came from my mother's garden. She had a huge overgrown cameronii and she uh, gave a bunch of pieces to me. Another aloe that came from her yard and some aeonium kiwis that always look terrible in the summer and now are starting to really come into their own. There's a lot more aloe here, more cameroni eyes. They're looking green because they have so much water. Once they start to get thirsty, they'll go really red or you can even um, cut their roots and it will kind of put them under stress and they'll turn this beautiful red color. My blue agave Americana is just absolutely huge and it's growing so many pups and I need to take care of those. I'm planning on giving those away um, because they get a little bit invasive and they're so sharp and prickly, they're gonna get really difficult to remove if I don't take action pretty quickly. So there's a few more aloes in this yard since the last time I did one of these walkthrough videos. Those were from a neighbor who had left out a ton of free plants um, when they had cleared their yard. My Crassula Shrek's ears or Crassula Gollum, they are getting full and happy, getting almost too big, but I really like how they're starting to fill in there. So that's the thing with all of this stuff. I have a lot of free plants and they go in and they look kind of bad and sparse and a little bit too much space between them, but eventually they start to fill in. I'm kind of returning back to this side, you'll know it's winter because look at all that greenery. So this is wood sorrel or sour grass and it, it really takes over in the winter time here in California. I kind of just let it go crazy here. It's so hard to take care of. I pull it where I can. You can see where I've pulled it here. It still comes out. But I'm just gonna let this be like a fairy woodland. The only problem you'll notice with these nasturtiums, with the wood sorrel, um, I have other things planted in here and they're starting to lose their sunlight because this stuff is taking over. But come the summer, this stuff's all gonna die back. Need to get rid of some of these weeds while we're here. You know, you have to just figure out what your work-life balance is and take care of the things that you can. In a way, it's kind of nice having all the beautiful greenery for a while, it's very seasonal. Um, this Pride of Madeira, that is a volunteer. These things just go so crazy um, big here and drop so many babies. That one doesn't really bother me too much. This other volunteer that's here, that's getting really huge, I might remove that because it's starting to take over this part of the yard, as pretty as it is, and as much as I do like the flowers that bring in the pollinators, I think it's a little bit too big. Um, going back through our path, I've planted a lot more rock purslane that came from other parts of the yard a lot more aeonium. Everything is just so lush and green right now. 
um, more aloe. This aloe has sort of fallen over. And here's another little succulent. I can't remember the name of these. That came from a little tiny pup that had uh, found at a shopping mall, actually. And here's some more weed. Now, I'll get rid of this while we're walking through here. <laughs> so one big difference as well is uh, I used to have a giant pile of rocks over there and uh, now we have instead a path. Those rocks I had planned for my dry riverbed and my hubby one uh, Sunday morning was just feeling a little busy and he made a little path and I have to say I'm not complaining because it looks pretty put together. And it's interesting, those are all the like little weeds that I just haven't taken care of. And in a way, you know, why bother <laughs> at this point? Uh, and maybe that leaves more space for new places to grow things. So over here, again, these Aeonium Kiwis, I'm just loving these. They always look terrible in the summer and look fantastic in the winter. And my little cute succulent garden in the log it's coming alive looking colorful a, a lot of these look really bad in the summertime but in the winter they are happy and my little crassula corner so this area doesn't get much sun so it stays pretty green you can see the blue chalk sticks the senecio they're really leggy they're stretching looking for some sunshine struggling to find it but I mean, it's kind of a nice green corner. This is finally starting to fill in. A lot of these little crassulas here were just found on the side of the road. You know, they drop off of people's plants and I picked them up. I've got our little front yard. Again, we had some, we had quite a rain event. So this needs to be fixed. This was our drain. We had a big blocked drain, our uh, driveway flooded thanks to this being blocked but we figured it out and I need to kind of figure out what we're gonna do with that these uh, agave tenuatas they started out as teeny tiny things we might be outgrowing this fence a little bit my leucodendron it's kind of stretching looking for Sun it doesn't get enough sunshine We've got a lot of bird of paradise that block the Sun here but but it's still alive it could be more red but it's okay nothing major changing here just everything growing really big and then just going back towards this part of the yard again another volunteer pride of Madeira and this is one cute part of the garden been creating this succulent tapestry it's starting to get bigger a lot of these were um, much smaller when they went in this was a lot of these aeoniums came from the same neighbor that had left a ton of stuff out um, I I did a whole video showing making this little uh, solar water fountain. I have the water taken out because we haven't had a lot of sun. Um, so I just removed the water and the plants and the animals don't need water right now because it has been quite wet. But um, when it gets warmer, I'm gonna put the water back in. And uh, might have to take care of some of these nasturtiums because again, they cover up a lot of the plants and make it hard for them to get sun and then when you do remove them they get sunburned but we have had some gopher problems too so we need to look into that we've got a tree aloe going up the tree and uh, yeah that's the front it's really green succulents just really love the winter time to kind of regenerate themselves and a lot of things are really starting to root and grow and come alive. Here's another corner I've fixed up a bit. I have my Aeonium Sunburst. I'm all about always changing up the yard, you know. Why keep it the same? This is looking a little bit crazy and wild, um, so it does need to be tidied up, but it's kind of a nice little focal point. I didn't want to put this aeonium straight into the soil, so I kept it in that pot, but this definitely needs to be fixed up. It's a little, a little bit too crazy. 
the other part of the yard, the front part of the yard, these pea flower bushes are so huge now. It's not until you look at old footage and you see how small they used to be. Um, so I might need to kind of tame them a bit. And then these are Mexican sage. They're much happier with all the rain and you, I have found that they do so much better when they're cut back. So that one's always been there. This one used to be there and that's one big difference. We've put in this raised vegetable bed because this gets the most sun. And uh, even in winter, we've got our lettuce. We've got our snow peas. We have some potatoes. Um, I have a whole video about putting this thing in, doing a hugel culture bed. So that has been a fun project. And uh, oh, right here, this is another free plant that I found on the side of the road recently. A neighbor had put it out. I think that's gonna go next to the fence. There's another project for me to do. Um, but yeah, we've kind of found that this soil is clay. Um, I tried to start reversing the clay with some sunflowers, but um, yeah, it might just be better as a spot to walk to our uh, vegetable beds. Up here on our hillside garden, this is starting to fill in. There's another Aeonium sunburst, and that used to be tiny. It is just loving this spot. There's a little birthday present, agave I need to put in. And we used to have a really giant Pride of Madeira up there, and with the rain, this hill started to fall in and it started to fall out. But one thing I will note about uh, erosion, hillside erosion, this is my native California garden. I feel like I talked about it in one of my walkthroughs before and I planted all these plants up here specifically. It's looking a bit bad because it is winter and a lot of them have gone dormant. Um, but we didn't have any erosion problems when we first moved into this house. This would be just mud. Now it's kind of a mess. <laughs> this would just be mud coming down this retaining wall. But since planting the ceanothus, this is salvia sage, that's manzanita. Up there is buckwheat. That's not native, but it's a pelargonium. Um, and since planting all of these, those roots are all working together to hold this hillside in. So I need to fill in some more. What's exciting to me is that's a buckwheat. Um, a California, it's actually a Channel Islands buckwheat. It's got lots of volunteers. It's spread a lot of seeds. So it should start to really fill in and that will really make this hillside look so much better. Like I said, it's not so pretty, but it's functional. And in the summertime, a lot of these salvias just go crazy with the flowers. So I'm looking forward to watching this garden evolve. And then I'll just finish off with my um, little succulent retaining wall. Move some of these things. I, I placed a lot of pots here during the rain. Um, this is still pretty happy. It's a little bit overgrown, so I think I will do a video um, kind of cutting this back and replanting it. But talk about a spot that is really coming alive and being really happy. And here's all my other millions of projects that I'm sure needs an update. So many things going on. But that's it, just wanted to give a quick update of what's happening in the garden, January, 2023. Um, thanks so much for watching and following along. And if you have any questions for me about my garden or propagation or other plants or any advice, I can try and help. I'm certainly not a plant expert, more of a plant fan, um, but I always love talking to you in the comments. So don't forget to check me out on Instagram and TikTok, and of course, subscribe.